right now on Full Force Nature. A floating classroom is turned on its side when it comes face to face with high seas in the Gulf of Alaska. Heavy rains swell the Mississippi River over its banks, flooding cities and destroying homes. Then, a hailstorm in Colorado turns the first day of summer into an icy landscape that catches drivers by surprise. A violent tornado in Kansas cuts a path across the prairie and gets too close for comfort. And witness the terrifying moments when lightning strikes a pair of heroic police officers in New Mexico. Extreme weather, told by the people who lived through it. Right now, on Full Force Nature. Full Force Nature. Sometimes we underestimate its power. But then, when we least expect it, nature throws us a curve. Vancouver, British Columbia. This picturesque setting is the launch point for a once-in-a-lifetime experience for college students called Semester at Sea. The very first day, it's just this huge emotion. Everyone's just like, oh my gosh, I'm actually doing this. I'm actually sailing around the world. But just a few days from port, the floating classroom, a brand new ship called the MV Explorer, is caught in a violent storm in the Gulf of Alaska. We had rough seas since we left Vancouver, and um, I noticed that the rocking was getting progressively worse as time went on, but it was more like, okay, we have 13-foot waves, now we have 20-foot waves, now we have 25, 30, 35. Okay, I'm a little seasick, but, um, you know, everybody seems to be pretty calm. Everything was put inside drawers because nothing could be on the counter. There was just no way. And so everything was put inside, but it was sloshing around, as you can imagine, everywhere. And we had to duct tape all of our doors shut. At first, the students joke about getting tossed around on the high seas. <laughs> but then, things get ugly. My cabin is at the, was at the front of the ship. And so I could actually hear the foghorn. And I remember waking up kind of drowsy at 6 AM, and my roommate and I kind of looked at each other. You know, why is the horn going off? Something must be wrong. While the captain has been trying to avoid the worst of the storm, a monstrous 60-foot wave has crashed through the bridge and knocked out power to all but one emergency engine. Students document the raging seas with their home video cameras. Please be calm. Please be aware that the captain is doing the best he can to try to navigate us and find a smooth ride. In the meantime, please stay in your cabin. Please hold on to railings as you go back to your cabin. And please do your best to remain calm. And we're going to try to do the best we can to communicate with you and let you know what's going on. Thank you, and hang in there, everyone. The captain tries to navigate the ship into the swells and wait out the storm 650 miles south of the Alaskan coast. The assistant dean came on and made some announcements. And his voice was very, very shaky. He seemed terrified, like he'd been up all night shaking. And that's when, like, a pit in our stomach, it was like, oh my gosh, you know, we've never heard him sound like this before. This really is serious. The constant rocking means that everything that is not nailed down is sent crashing about. The sound alone is unnerving. Everyone on board is ordered to put on life vests and sit in a group as the storm intensifies. For the most part, people weren't talking a lot. There was a little bit of um, chatter, but I remember 
trying to talk to a girl that was next to me and I could tell that she was just petrified because she wouldn't say anything to me. When you didn't hold on, you would slide and sometimes at a tremendous speed and you'd hurt yourself. I think at one point I was caught off guard talking and I slid and actually bruised my ankle quite a bit um, because once I slid then other people slid and I kind of got smashed into a wall. It was just a little bit scary to see the ship basically falling apart in front of my eyes as, and potentially breaking through the glass and crashing down on us. Through it all, the students weather the storm with a combination of humor and faith. I always have been one of these people that trusted my instinct on things, trusted my gut. I just knew that somehow, some way, we were going to make it through. Well, thank you, each and every one. We'll get you there. I promise. Finally, the storm passes. The seas begin to calm, and the explorer makes an unscheduled but welcome stop in Honolulu. I think, you know, as with anything on the planet, you just have to kind of go with the flow and do what works best for your situation. I mean, there's no way to change the direction of storms or anything like that. In the end, the 750 passengers and crew suffered only minor injuries and rattled nerves. And the students continued their journey with a bit more knowledge of the power of extreme weather. The Mississippi River stretches over 2,000 miles through the middle of the North American continent. And when record rains fall across the Midwest, disaster looms on the horizon. Well, we had, we had a major rain in early July, six inches over about a 24-hour period. And uh, the Mississippi River is already high in this particular area. And we had a lot of local flooding. And it kind of set the alarm that hey, we're, we're up with something pretty serious here. Clear skies disguise the threat as release waters from already flooded tributaries upstream feed the Mississippi until it has nowhere to go but out. Mandatory evacuation warnings spread rapidly all along the Mississippi River. Areas around St. Louis, Missouri are particularly hard hit. Waters submerge entire neighborhoods up to their rooftops. Some residents are left stranded as they attempt to save their homes piece by piece. With the waters rising and unbearable loss all around them, residents mobilize to save what's left. Chains of human sandbaggers race against time knowing that rains hundreds of miles upstream will soon push the river even higher. But despite massive efforts, the levees keep breaking. Most of our levees, uh, the upper part of the levee and the downstream side are all sand. Um, that becomes a real problem when you have a failure because that sand is lost. It just goes out over all the fields and it's very difficult to, to reconstruct a uh, sand levee. We knew we had a problem, but we weren't prepared. We didn't have enough time to really uh, have the level of flood protection we need to prevent a disaster. In the path of high-velocity waters, sand levees erode almost instantly, and flooding moves inland. Once we start seeing that water come over, within 20 to 30 minutes, we start seeing a wa much wider area open up. Depending on the size of the opening, if you're getting velocities of 15 to 20 feet per second in, in certain areas, whereas in, in normal conditions, you may be in at the four to seven feet per second. At their peak, angry waters continue to cut through, drowning farming communities already on the brink. Silos float away like leaves on a stream. A farmhouse is taken down, sucked under by the raging current. Waters fill the house inside and blow doors and windows open. In a matter of seconds, the waters twist the structure to bits and carry it downstream. 
It's just one of many homes wiped away by relentless waters. Between late June and mid-August, some areas receive two times the normal rainfall. The subsequent floods displace over 70,000 people, cover 12,000 square miles of farmland, and inflict between 15 and 20 billion dollars in damage. Coming up on Full Force Nature, a mile-wide Kansas tornado rips homes to their foundations. But first, a summer hailstorm turns the streets of a Colorado town into an icy soup. Welcome back to Full Force Nature. The Rocky Mountains push up more than 14,000 feet high and run north to south across central and western Colorado. It's here that they have a dramatic effect on weather. June 21st, 2005, the annual summer solstice. Thunderstorms on Colorado's front range usher in hailstorms that wreak havoc on the city of Colorado Springs. Photojournalist Pete Birdsong covers the events of the day for the local news. When the storm actually came in and it started raining and we started getting the hail mixed into it. Solid chunks of hail clogged drainage systems in a major intersection. In moments, it becomes a pool of icy water that strands drivers. And the first thing I noticed were people sitting on top of the cars. Their car had stalled out and that was it. They couldn't go anywhere. Amidst the chaos, fire and rescue workers wade through icy waters, searching for trapped motorists terrified inside their cars. Luckily, rescuers locate survivors. With rain still falling, drivers are carefully retrieved from stalled cars through open hatchbacks and windows. Despite warmer air temperatures, for those trapped in their vehicles, swimming to safety is out of the question. Hail showers hitting the flooded surface make a frozen icy crust that moves about like icebergs. Entering the water means risking hypothermia. The water was freezing. Even though it is summer, hail is ice, and it's not going to do anything but drop the temperature. Despite the fact that the air was fine, my hands starting to get numb as I was shooting because the water was really cold. Summer rain is familiar weather to local residents. Even a hailstorm is common, but a long spell of both can be a disastrous concoction. There was so much rain and there was so much hail and it didn't stop. It just kept going and going and going. Just when you thought this has got to be the peak of it, it started getting harder. It was pretty intense. In a single day, rescuers successfully responded to over 30 water rescues, saving individuals from the icy soup of hail and rainfall. Coming up, a pair of police officers in New Mexico survive a lightning strike in the line of duty. But first, see what happens when an F-4 tornado changes direction and catches chasers with nowhere to turn. When we come back with Full Force Nature. You're watching Full Force Nature. Few storms capture our attention like tornadoes. They're mysterious, elusive, and destructive. We have a tornado on the ground in front of us, multiple vortices. It's 5.10 p.m. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it is on the ground, man. Look at that. This, this is a real intense you know, monster tornado. You can actually see the rip, you can see ripples on the edges of it because it's so incredibly intense. A team of storm chasers led by Jim Bishop is on the hunt in southeastern Kansas. Their target, an F-4 tornado cutting a destructive path near the town of Girard. Then we had to actually catch up to the storm, so we had to literally chase the storm. 
As it moves northeast at about 35 miles an hour. We have a large wedge on the ground. In the wake of the storm, trees are ripped clean and downed power lines cross the road. Oh my gosh, there's a wedge. Wow. We have a wedge. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm watching this right now. This is unbelievable. Uh, I had never seen a wedge before. This is my first wedge tornado, and I was, I was so excited. A wedge tornado is a tornado that looks wider than it is tall. Most people, when they think of a tornado, they think of the classic Wizard of Oz type tornado, you know, a, a rope that's skinny at the bottom, you know, kind of curved and nice and photogenic and pretty and all that. And, and it looks scary. This tornado that we saw in Girard, Kansas, it's a dark black blob, you know? It doesn't look like a typical tornado. The tornado's winds, estimated at 200 miles per hour or higher, spew huge plumes of dirt and debris skyward. Its wide base destroys everything in its path. We have, we have damage. Oh, we have heavy damage. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, man. The tree is down. Oh, man. Damage to the, damage to the house. Looks like damage to the roof. Oh, man. Dude, oh my gosh, someone's house just got completely... Look to your right, look to your right. Oh my gosh, guys, heavy damage, we have heavy damage. This, oh this my is gosh, damage. dude, that's some F4 damage. We're just seeing complete and utter devastation on both sides of the road where the tornado has pushed through. We're seeing f just, just, just concrete slabs left over from what was, from what were houses. Oh I mean, it's just, it's, it's sobering. This, oh this my gosh, dude, that's some F4 damage. Okay, slow down, man. Slow down. Here it is. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. All of a sudden, the tornado changes direction. Oh my god! Oh my god, damn it's right there! Oh! I actually hang out the window to get a better shot as the tornado is like, you know, looks like it's kind of coming at us. And there's all this debris flying in the air. Dude, back up! Freaking back up! It's right there! Left than 100 yards! It's right there! With no time to turn around, they throw the car in reverse, punch the gas, and hope for the best. Holy it takes quick reflexes and a heavy foot on the gas to outrun this monster storm. We actually had to go in reverse to, to make sure that we weren't hit by any debris, you know, because we got pretty close. Jim survives this close call and gains an even greater appreciation for this potent force of nature. It's like a culmination of all your chases. And I mean, pe pe you can't imagine what it's really like until you actually see it and experience it. It's just, it's, it's truly unbelievable. Coming up, two heroic police officers save flood victims and themselves when full force nature returns. You're watching Full Force Nature. Lightning has contributed to more deaths than any other weather phenomenon. And when skies turn electric, the best thing to do is run for cover. July 20th, two massive thunderstorms collide in New Mexico. Officers Lance Bateman and Clint Barnell are dispatched to help stranded motorists caught by the unexpected flooding. That night there was heavy thunderstorms in the area, uh, heavy lightning and lots of rain. Uh, we were worried in the area, especially south of Portales, of possible road flooding, people becoming trapped on the roadway. As night falls and the storm waters rise, a dash-mounted camera catches officers Bateman and Varnell as they rush to help a family caught in the flooding. I stepped out of my unit and I stepped in about knee-deep water. Uh, it was just a lake out there, and we were experiencing some heavy lightning strikes. I didn't really even think about the lightning or the thunder while it was occurring. Uh, I was just, my main worry was to get that woman and her children out of the car and get her into another vehicle. Then, a massive flash. I heard a loud, like, crashing noise, and I felt a sharp pain in my head. 
and the next thing I knew, I was underwater. As soon as I came back to, I knew that we'd been hit by lightning. Uh, my first thought was Officer Bateman's welfare. I, I actually thought he was dead. Uh, I helped him get up out of the water. Uh, helped him kind of gain his footing. Uh, I was very nauseous, didn't know how far we was, was going to make it from there. Studying the video from the dash-mounted video camera, the bright flash of the lightning bolt can be seen striking the water nearby, then pumping electricity like a taser shot into both men. If the lightning would have hit us directly, we'd have probably been killed. With the amount of water in the area, the spread out water probably disseminated the energy of the lightning strike. After gathering their wits and counting their lucky stars, both officers actually returned to duty, helping more stranded motorists get out of the floodwaters. We still had a lot of people out there that needed our help, and uh, we just kind of put that in the back of our mind and, and took care of business there. Lucky to be alive, both officers can now laugh off their brush with nature's full force. We still get teased every now and then about it. Uh, they gave us nicknames. They nicknamed me Sparky and Officer Varnell Flint. So we got some pretty good ribbon from our fellow officers. That's all for this edition. Tune in next time for even more amazing encounters with weather on Full Force Nature. To be sure that you are prepared for the full force of nature, your local forecast is next, right here on the Weather Channel.